Hey folks, it is Saturday, February 12th. The time is quarter after five and the temperature right now is around minus seven degrees Celsius. And this here is DuPont Street. And there is DuPont Station just across the street there. And coming up is Spadina Road. And what's interesting here is that the southbound lanes have been blocked off. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. There you can see the police have blocked them off, but the northbound lanes are okay. Although they are at least letting transit buses through. And the police have set up a perimeter around Queens Park of different roads that have been closed. And for this one, I started at DuPont and Spadina and I think I'm going to make my way south and east and probably finish up around Sherburne Station. I don't really have a set route in mind or anything like that. I just thought I'd go for a walk. If I see anything interesting, I'll head over towards it. A week ago, a week ago today actually, there was a rather large protest in the city. And that was part of the Freedom Convoy. And there's been protests, I think, on Saturdays quite regularly over the past few years. But given the size and scale of last week's, I think there was some concern that there might be a repeat this week. And according to the Toronto Police website here, they've set up a perimeter around Queen's Park that goes from DuPont in the south, sorry, <laughs> DuPont in the north, and that's where I just was, Church Street to the east, Spadina in the west, which would be right here, and Queen Street in the south. They've also closed off College Street from Bay to Young. So that would be along the stretch where the Toronto Police Headquarters are located. And the Don Valley Parkway south at Richmond Street and the Gardner, Gardner Expressway eastbound at Park Lawn Road. As well as on ramps east of the Humber. So that's quite a bit of closures. I did live stream from around the protest area last week and I reached out to some friends who are downtown earlier today and they said there really wasn't a big crowd at all and there wasn't much of a spectacle so I kind of just stayed home and relaxed. And this is Bernard Avenue and it looks like they're blocking off eastbound traffic here. So this is the Annex neighborhood. This would be just to the north of downtown. What am I waiting for? <laughs> the road is blocked off. It doesn't really matter if the sign says walk or go, does it? As long as there's no bikes or anything coming through. There's a maple leaf on that vehicle. And 
And yesterday, the province did declare a state of emergency in the province. Although this one, not directly due to COVID, but rather due to some of the blockades that prevent the movement of goods and people, particularly at the borders. There's the 26 DuPont bus. And here's the northern entrance to Spadina Station. This will take you down to the Line 1 platform. There's another one just across the street. And this is kind of nice, it's well after 5 p.m., but we've still got a fair bit of daylight. And because the subway is closed, Heading southbound from where I live near Eglinton Station, I took a bus over to Eglinton West Station and then I took the subway down to DuPont Station. That guy <laughs> turned around and started shouted or started to shout at that woman. It's an unfortunate situation. And this is Louther Avenue. I think they're allowing local traffic to filter in. There's a friendly officer. And coming up is Bloor Street West, which I think will be open from here over to Queens Park. I'm not entirely sure. According to Reddit, you can't really trust the closures listed on Google Maps. And I found that to be the case last Sunday when I came out. A number of streets were marked as closed on 
Google, and in reality they weren't. And it seems to be the opposite case today. There's the Madison Pub. So south of Blue Street here, Spadina Road becomes Spadina Avenue. And you could take that all the way down to Chinatown. And this would be the main entrance to Spadina Station. You can hop on the streetcar here, or head down to Line 2, or you could walk north and make a very long transfer up to Line 1. If you're transferring from Line 1 to Line 2, you're better off doing it just one stop to the east of here at St. George. And I can hear a police chopper or a chopper, but I can't seem to locate it. I'll put the camera on it if I can find it. Oh, look at this, Blue Street. Is close to eastbound traffic. I think the key is to say that you live that way and they'll let you go. They might be a little suspicious of you if you're driving a big truck. cars here signaling that they want to turn. He was telling her that it's very hard to get where she wants to go. So this is east on Blue Street West, and we're still in the annex. And these are some crazy slippery sidewalks. Look at all that ice. I keep looking up and spinning my head around, but I can't find this helicopter. Maybe my echolocation just isn't very good.
There's a look south on Huron Street. And here is Gayubi coming up. A rather excellent all-you-can-eat Japanese barbecue. Yeah. So the walk I recorded yesterday finished up, well, well one of them, at St. George Station here. I try not to backtrack or overlap, but for the next block I do apologize. This is St. George Street here. So if this protest is to have a ground zero, it would be just up ahead here. Where Queens Park and Avenue Road meet Fleur Street. That looks like everyone has probably already dispersed. Apparently a few, a few hours ago there was already a march. Hey, I spotted a helicopter. Hopefully I was able to get the camera on it. And on the right here is Varsity Stadium. St. George Station just to the north here. And here's the Royal Ontario Museum just on the right. And there was someone in my premiere this morning in the chat asking if it was a good idea to come down and go to the museum today. To which I replied, why not? Thank 
And it looks like a fair bit of people had the same idea. Looks like there's a lot of protesters gathered over there. Having some McDonald's. This is a very different scene than what it was a week ago. There's the look north up Avenue Road and to the south is Queens Park. And this part of Bloor Street is the Mink Mile. They've recorded along there quite a bit recently. So I'm gonna head south here, just to Charles Street maybe. They've got these big city vehicles to block off the streets. There's the eastern entrance to the ROM. And south of here, this will lead you through the Provincial Legislative Assembly. And it sounds like there is a gathering at Queen's Park. Hmm. I've arrived at Charles Street where I said I was going to go. Maybe I'll just go south another block. We can see how big the crowd is. Then I'll make my way east. I think I said I was going to go to Sherburn Station. I might change that to Wellesley. There's Emmanuel College. So this is all University of Toronto around us. There's a large gathering down there, but they appear to be blasting music. That's not a good thing if you're a YouTuber. I might pick up a copyright complaint or copyright match. That actually looks to be quite a small crowd. A 
Well, I don't think the Canadian National Anthem will pick up a content ID match. All right, let's cut through Victoria College here. I've been this way before. Let's see where this way takes me. So this is the most eastern part of the university's eastern or St. George downtown campus. That is a really neat looking building. That is Brennan Hall. There's the Maritain House. And this here is St. Joseph Street, and I headed along this in that walk I recorded a week ago. You're so dramatic. You're so dramatic. So in a feeble attempt not to backtrack, let's head this way. It's hard not to wander around this part of downtown and find yourself on the U of T campus. That will be Bay Street just up ahead. So a week ago, St. Joseph Street here was closed off. But that is not the case today. You can see it's a sea of ice here. I think I'll 
continue heading east on St. Joseph here. Continue. I wasn't really heading east on it to begin with, really, but... It's been a while since I've been along this stretch. And that's a look southbound bay. And as you can see, there's no traffic disruptions. When I think of Young Street, this kind of boring, uninspired architecture certainly doesn't come to mind. With its cookie cutter condo retail outlets. And here is Young Street. All right, I think I'll turn east here at Wellesley. And here is Wellesley Station on the left. And there's a UFC event tonight. That should be pretty good. And someone asked in my Friday live stream where they could go see it. And I suggested this Fox and the Fiddle just across the street.
And this way is taking me over to Church in Wellesley, which would be the heart of the village. Well, I guess I am heading over to Sherman Station after all. Kind of looked down and saw the video was a bit short. I've still got some time on my hands, so why not? No, thank you. And it looks like the police had barriers set up here. And they're in the process of removing them right now. I saw flashing lights at this intersection just a few minutes ago. And the car drove off and here's an officer clearing up the barriers. I think most of the action in the village is just to the south of here. So this is north on the east side of Church Street. And I think I should make more videos at this time of day. I think it's kind of the perfect lighting for this sort of thing. Well, Church Street was supposed to be the eastern end of the perimeter that the police have set up. But it looks like they've done away with that now. I think the real concern was just big trucks rolling in. And then not wanting to leave. I don't think it had anything to do with crowd control or anything like that. Yes, electric tattoo. And here is Isabella Street.
I can still hear those choppers overhead. There it is. And it's Charles Street, my original <laughs> plan when I went south on Queens Park was to walk along Charles. There's still police cars set up in a lot of these east-west streets here. And tomorrow is the Super Bowl. So I'm probably going to do maybe a Super Bowl theme walk, if that's even possible in Toronto tomorrow. Maybe from Exhibition Stadium, or where it was, where BMO Field is now, over to the Sky Dome. There's a look up at One Blue West, or rather East. And when she left, it didn't work. And here is Hayden Street. There's either a very patriotic truck owner. Or a protester. Or both. There's a couple of police cars. Not sure what purpose they're serving right now. But we have arrived back at Bloor Street and I am now heading east along the south side of Bloor Street East. I'm just gonna walk over to Sherburn Station. There's the Manny Life Building. He's going to grab a warm drink. So at least the scene this evening is mostly pretty much business as usual. Some traffic disruptions, some street closures, but seems to be the usual amount of people out and about.
So coming up will be Ted Rogers, which is really the north end of Jarvis Street. And then the next major street will be Sherburn. Here is Ted Rogers Way. And just to the south, like I mentioned, that becomes Jarvis Street. There's the southern terminus of Mount Pleasant. I did a live stream a few weeks ago that walks south down Mount Pleasant. And I think I started all the way up at Eglinton. And there's where you'll find the National Post. And I think the Toronto Sun is also located in that building. I gotta fish out my mask because I'm about to hop into the subway. I covered a fair amount of ground on that one. We're not even at 50 minutes yet. There you go, I've got the mask on. We have arrived at Sherburn. Oh, good thing. Man, look at that nice purpley blue sky. Just look south down Sherburn. All right, I'm gonna head on into the subway station now. And I hope you enjoyed this one starting at DuPont Station, or rather in front of DuPont Station. And I went south down Spadine at a blur. And I walked over to Queens Park and then I went south and went east to the University of Toronto. And I took that down to Wellesley Street. Then I walked over to the village, north up Church. 
and then east on Bloor over to here at Sherburn Station. If you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. And I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. They have merch available at stridesweg.com. It's kind of hard to talk over the noisy train sometimes. But anyways, thank you for watching. As always, stay warm, stay safe, and I will catch you in the next one.